Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Junk Food Zombie channel. So I've got a video for you guys today on a rifle that you've not seen on the channel before. I'm so lucky as to have someone allow me to use this rifle for an extended period of time and make some videos with it. So thank you to them. What rifle is it? What am I talking about? Well, if you looked at the title, you'll already know. However, it is the IWI Galil Ace. This is the 7.62x51 version, uh, which is also known as 7.62 NATO or 308. Uh, there's some debate as far as whether or not that's the same cartridge as a 308. However, speaking directly to IWI, it's perfectly safe to fire both cartridges 308 and 760x51 in here, so you are good to go. So what is this? I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the background of this rifle, where it comes from, and then I'll give you a rundown on all the features because there's a lot. What is it? It's basically a modernized Israeli AK. So where does it come from? Uh, a lot of you may be familiar with the original Galil. In the late 60s, Israel developed a new rifle uh, based on the AK. Uh, apparently, they were having some reliability issues in uh, with their FALs. I believe it was FALs in the conditions they were fighting in. And their uh, enemies were not having quite the same issues with their AKs. So they used the AK as kind of a jumping off point. And I think they really took a lot of cues from the Finnish Valmet AKs, the uh, the RK-62, RK-63, I believe, um, that those Valmet AKs, I think, were really the big, uh, the, the big contributor to the original Galils. They used a milled receiver. Um, they took that from the Valmets. Their, their sights, they, they incorporated the front sight and gas block together into one unit as opposed to a separate front sight post all the way up front. Uh, they took the rear sight and moved it off of the, the front end of the receiver and put it all the way at the rear end of the receiver on top of the dust cover. Um, they put a, a thumb safety on there instead of just your typical dust. Now, it does have the dust cover safety on the right side, but they added the thumb safety, which works as well. Um, so they made some improvements. And the milled receivers, while they're a little bit heavier, are a, bit more, a little more durable than a stamped receiver, although stamped receivers are pretty solid. You know, they're pretty reliable. Um, the milled receivers have less flex, and some people claim better accuracy. If that's true, I don't know. I haven't really researched it. Um, the Vepers seem to be pretty accurate in their stamp receiver guns. Uh, I think I think your barrel quality um, probably has more to do with it than the, the receiver. But that's just me. Like I said, I haven't really researched that. So, what's the difference between the original Galils and standard AKs to the Galil Ace? Well, this is a highly modernized version of the Galil. It's definitely an evolution of the Galil, and we'll go over it. There's a lot here to unpack, guys, so bear with me. I'm just getting over being sick. I've had a migraine all day, so if I grab a bottle of water and take a sip here and there, bear with me. Um, you know, my throat's not doing so great. So, um, where do I start? I'm not going to go in any particular order. I'll just go from one end to another, and, uh, well... Or I'll start wherever, so bear with me. Like the original Galil, there is a, a milled receiver. However, this one has a polymer assembly uh, attached to the bottom of the receiver. Now, if you were to take this off, the bottom of the receiver is not open. This is not really like a lower receiver. It's just kind of stuck on the receiver. The magwell and the hole for the trigger are open. And that's about it on the actual steel receiver. It's relatively heavy. It's about 7.8 pounds, I believe, on this model. And the 5.56 version, I think, is like 6.5 or 6.7 pounds. Um, not sure how they got that one so much lighter because they're the same exact size. Um, surprisingly, the 308 is the same size as the 5.56 version. Um, but it is a milled receiver, and, and they did save some weight by using this uh, polymer magwell. All it does is it houses the magwell, the mag release, trigger guard and the pistol grip which has a uh, storage compartment which is nice it allows you to put the sight adjustment tool in there along with spare firing pins extractors etc whatever you want now the mag release is ambidextrous there's a button on either side which is nice um, the safety i was telling you about you still have a little lever over here but you'll notice there's no dust cover um and there's no channel for the charging handle because there's no charging handle there all right, so that's different. Safety is also on the left-hand side. Okay, so you got this thumb safety here, like on the original Galil. Now, some people have called this an ambidextrous safety. It's not, just because there's a safety on each side. They're not identical, so that doesn't make it ambidextrous. Uh, you can use your left hand for this side, 
either that or use your thumb. Um, it kind of gets in the way of your finger, your trigger finger. However, it's not bad if you hook your finger, so it's definitely left hand doable. However, this side, absolutely not. You're not manipulating this with your left hand by any reasonable, you know, in any reasonable manner. So it's not truly ambidextrous. It's just left hand doable, not left hand friendly or anything like that. Um, and if you notice on the left hand side, we have this charging handle, which is really cool. This is very nice. For a lot of people who prefer not to, you know, load a magazine and then have to turn the rifle and run their hand over or under or release uh, control of their firing hand and pull that. None of that stuff really bothers me, but it is a nice touch and it is quick. It allows you to hold the rifle after you put your mag in and the charging handle is right there. So that's nice. It also has this moving dust cover like you would see on a FN... Uh, the, the, the M249 saw, when you pull this charging handle down, that dust cover moves, and that keeps debris out of the receiver. So, unlike the dust covers on the old AKs and the old Galils, where while you were in the firing position, that charging handle slot was open to debris, this is not. It's always closed. So, you have no ingress point here, really. There's very little here, because this is pretty close to the dust cover. So you, you really have to try hard to get a lot of crud in there, um, and you don't have that channel here. So this is a very reliable AK in harsh conditions because it really does a good job of keeping things out. The trigger is, um, is a nitpick for me. It is a single action, uh, is not a single action, duh. it is a two-stage trigger. So you got a little bit of a take up, and then it breaks. Um, let me get this mag out. And then... A decent reset so it's a good feeling two-stage trigger uh, it doesn't have a bolt hold open um, the bolt will get stuck on the magazine however if you wrap the charging handle it you know uh, strong enough it will go back it just happens to be the design of these magazines in the bolt that it will kind of get hung up on there but it is not a bolt hold open um, which you will find in the 556 version of this rifle um, so that's uh, a lot of that there. We'll go over the rail now. The rail system is two pieces and the dust cover has, uh, well, basically if you've ever seen like tongue and groove flooring, the back of the rail on the gas tube has got a little groove and the front of the rail on the dust cover has got a little notch or tongue that goes in that notch and it locks into place here. There's a groove in the back of the receiver that this dust cover has to settle down into. And the dust cover is reinforced with an extra piece of seal and it's real tight. You got to kind of get it into place and give it a little karate chop to get it in there. It's really solid. It's not like a typical AK dust cover, which kind of can move around a little bit and sometimes rattle, but at least, you know, not be super sturdy. This is rock solid. So it's, it's a good place to mount an optic and really have it stay, you know, pretty consistent in the way it's going to your, your point of impact. Um, buttstock. Typical M4 AR-15 style collapsible buttstock. However, it does not use an AR-15 buffer tube, so um, this is the buttstock you get. I'm fine. I like this buttstock very much. It has a removable cheek piece. Um, however, if you're unhappy with that, there are a couple companies that do make an adapter. All you got to do is pull the dust cover off, knock this roll pin out, and this slides out. And you put uh, the adapter in, and any AR-15 buttstock you want is now available for your rifle. Um... Hand guards. Oh, this is also, sorry, uh, folding buttstock, which is very sturdy, very solid feeling. Uh, it, it folds for, you know, a nice compact size for transportation or, um, you know, just or storage. It's not meant to be fired that way. Um, and then you have your hand guards. Your hand guards are kind of fat, but I've got big gorilla hands, so that doesn't bother me. My wife also finds this relatively comfortable, and she's got tiny hands, so it's more of a personal preference. But what's really cool about these hand guards is there are these three rail covers. There are rails, 1913 rails underneath. And if you notice on this, there's this like weird thing going on here. They actually, on both sides, have a little channel here for wiring and a pressure switch. So you can put your button in here. And run your wiring up here and then you take this rail cover I can't see what I'm doing kind of blind here and then you can pop this little button out and then you have exposure for that switch but everything's underneath the cover 
Same thing here, you use a button here you can use or over here on this side. So that's kind of really cool. However, my only nitpick with this handguard, and it's my only complaint, is it's a little short. I'm kind of going to move back here to stay in frame. I, I like to be about here with the rifle, which is not particularly good for your finger when it comes up and contacts that barrel. So uh, I wish they had kind of made the, the handguards about yay long. I think it would have been about perfect. However, they didn't. So um, that's kind of what you got. However, like the buttstock, there are a couple companies, Midwest Industries and RS Regulate, that make other handrails. Uh, Midwest Industries, I know, makes, I think, at least two different lengths. They make a shorter one and a longer one. RS Regulate makes three lengths. Uh, one that is the same as stock, which is, I think, a little more or about half the weight of the stock one, which is cool. And then they make one that comes out to about here, which is perfect for me, which is exactly where I'd like it. And I believe it is an ounce or two even still lighter than this. So you get to get that extra length but not gain any weight. And uh, even though you're putting a little forward of here weight wise you're you're not gaining any weight overall so I don't it's kind of a wash I don't think you really feel any handling differences between it uh, they've got a nice fence on the handguard that comes up over the gas tube so you're not going to be touching the gas tube and they also make a full length rail I don't know if this is in frame that comes out to about here and uh, so I think you're poisoned uh, so if you're not happy with this buttstock or this handguard you absolutely have options to change that or upgrade it um, I guess that's about it. You've also got oh, two other things. You've got this muzzle brake, two-chamber muzzle brake, which is very effective. Shooting this thing with that muzzle brake and this, uh, the rubber on the butt pad makes it feel like you're shooting a 762 by 39 almost. It's really, really managed. My seven-year-old has shot this at a bench. Um, and it was winter time, so he was wearing a winter coat, but he's seven um, and had no issues with the recoil. He shot about four or five rounds. He said it didn't bother him at all. Um, and it didn't bother him... To the point where he was shooting at an eight inch plate and uh shot at it three times at 100 yards and hit it two times out of three times so the recoil wasn't bothering him at all so very nice recoil on this rifle is very little uh it's hard you can't really say anything other than just telling you that um if you fired it you'd understand uh it's a fantastic feeling rifle um, and the sights have tritium in them. The rear sight is like an AR-15. It's got two apertures. The 0 to 300 meter aperture has got a couple tritium vials on it, which doesn't help you like for uh, looking through the sights. But what it does is when it's dark, it does allow you to see where your sight is so you can quickly, you know, get an eye on it. And then the front sight also has a tritium vial. And the front sight is a two-piece affair where the threaded section spins separately from the, the post. So when you adjust your elevation, it doesn't matter where you adjust it, you're able to click your tritium vial on your front sight post back into place so it's facing the correct direction. So um, I think that covers just about everything. Like I said, there's a lot here to unpack. There's a lot of, a lot of upgrades, a lot of modern features compared to your typical AK especially. So I hope you guys like this. I'm going to do more videos on this. Um, I've got plans and I'm going to do another video for that because I don't want this one to get any longer. I'm, I knew this video would be long to begin with. Um, but while these aren't cheap, I think these retail for about two grand. I think you can get them for about 1800 you know, street price. I absolutely feel that these are not overpriced. The whole mentality, oh, that's an expensive AK. You really got to get one of these in your hands and open it up and look inside the machining the fit and finish of these rifles is fantastic it's a cold hammer forged barrel chrome lined uh, the gas block is chrome lined the uh, gas piston is chrome it, the whole rifle is just exceptionally well made um i know i did a video of what's better than a vepper um because the vepers are so exceptionally well made however this rifle is every bit as nice, and I might say there are some aspects of this rifle which are even nicer. Um, it's just a very well thought out rifle and an extremely well made rifle. I, I can't stress how much I believe it's absolutely worth every penny of what you would pay for it. So I'll see you guys in the next video. I've got some plans, and I just kind of want to ask your opinion on how I'm going to go forward with those particular videos about this rifle. So I will talk to you guys in the next one. I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you later. Bye.